Well, welcome back, folks. Today I'm going to do the reassembly of the top end, that being the cylinder, cylinder head, cam chain to the Honda SL125. You can see here I've got most of the components all laid out. These are all new, as I think I've talked about before. A new uh, th three sizes over piston, that'd be 0.75 millimeter. New set of rings to go with it. Uh, new wrist pin or gudgeon pin as our friends in the UK call it. New circlips. Uh, all of these parts are from Honda. These are Honda originals. I also have uh, new parts for the uh, cam chain tensioner and guide. That's what these are right here. These are NOS parts. I'm not sure right off the top of those. Those are still available from Honda. Um, they might be, I'm not sure. Those are NOS for sure. <clears throat> and of course the cylinder head and valves uh, were all assembled some time ago. I think I showed that in a previous video. Uh, so that's going to be the mission for today. The uh, couple things I want to talk about. The piston rings, there's three different types as you can see here. Let's see if I can get these out here for you. Get these up closer, you can see them. This ring right here is the oil control ring that goes on the bottom. This is in the bottom ring groove right here, that oil control ring. These two rings are not identical. They might look a bit identical except for their color, but there is a difference. The middle ring, that's the one I've got in my hand right now, has a, if you can see that or not, has a little bit of a notch in it right there and that is again the middle ring middle groove here and that notch goes down that faces down or in other words all the lettering and there is each one of these rings does have lettering or numbers on them probably too fine for you to pick up on the camera but the numbering or letters always go up on these pistons and by definition, then, on this ring, that would put this groove to the bottom. What's important is that goes in the middle right here like that. The piston itself, you'll notice, has, I think right there, an NIN stamped into it. That means intake side. So that side of the piston will face the intake side or the back side of the engine when I go ahead and put it all together. It's a very straightforward uh, assembly process. In fact, the piston pin is a nice, comfortable fit, as you can see there. It's not a, an interference fit, like some pistons almost are. It fits nice and comfortably. The trickiest part will be getting the uh, clips in right here to hold the piston pin in place. You'll note over here, well, let me reposition the camera a bit so you can see. You'll note over here that I have stuffed the cases with clean paper towels so that when I put this uh, piston on with these clips and if I drop the clip, it won't go down into the bottom end. And of course, if that was to happen, you'd have to fish it out or figure out how to get it out with a magnet or something. And it's easier just to avoid that whole situation by putting paper towel in there and then uh, just removing it before you slide the cylinder uh, over the top of the uh, engine. So I'm going to go ahead and put this assembly together. It's very straightforward, very simple, the piston, the way it goes on. I'm not going to record all that, but uh, we will catch you up as I progress through uh, this phase of the engine. Build. About 15 or so minutes later, and as you can see, I have the piston installed. One thing I didn't mention earlier is a handy little tool for installing piston rings is this piston ring expander. See right here. I don't always use this. It depends on the piston. The smaller the piston, the more inconvenient this is to use. But essentially, if my fingers on my left hand were the piston ring, you would hook it in like this, the ring, and then you open it up 
and it expands and then you just slip the rings over the top of the piston. And I did use this on this particular engine and it worked really well. The, uh, so the piston rings are installed. When you uh, position the rings, what you want to do is you want them the, around the top of the piston, you want the gaps split into thirds. So in other words, you want one gap here, uh, the center ring gap over probably here, somewhere in here, and then the third ring would have a gap somewhere over here. So all the ring gaps don't line up vertically like this. That's what all the books tell you to do. Uh, I've also heard that the rings rotate anyway when the engine's being run, so it doesn't make any difference, but I go ahead and follow the books and position the ring end gaps and stagger them around the piston. The other thing on the circlips uh, that you want to pay attention to, depending on the engine, uh, sometimes they'll put the gap of that circlip at the bottom or at the top, and I think the theory is that as the pressure of the engine running and the piston going up and down, that, that would keep that, that gap compressed. This, for this particular engine, at least in the uh, uh, one manual, the Honda manual doesn't call out any specification for the positioning of the circlip gap. The other uh, aftermarket manual does, I think it's a Clinton, um, does refer to or speak to having that gap on the side so it would be something like this rather than like, th like this. So I did position the clip end gaps to the side on each side of the piston per the one manual uh, their recommendation. So this is pretty much ready now for the cylinder. Again we've talked about that before. I will have to install the base gasket. There are two dowel pins that go in here to locate the assembly and then the cylinder should be simply a, a drop over the top. I don't think I'll have any issues with that. Got the base gasket in place. You can see right here a new base gasket liberally coated with NICs which is my custom and you can see here two new brand new dowel pins from Honda also liberally coated with anti-seize. So I think everything here is ready to go. You need to make sure of course the orientation of this gasket is correct because over here on the back side where I'm pointing to my left index finger there is an outlet cut into the gasket to allow the oil feed to come up into the cylinder and top end of the engine. Cylinder is also ready to go. I've talked about this in some detail before so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. What I am going to do now though is double check my piston ring placement to make sure that I have them equally spaced this way around the piston. I will liberally lubricate the top and sides of the piston with uh, assembly lube as well as the cylinder itself. And I'm not expecting this is going to be uh, difficult to install. I don't attempt to use any kind of, usually I should say, I don't attempt to use any kind of ring compressor on small engines like this. If I was to use a ring compressor or I had to, I would probably use zip ties. And I think I've talked about that in some older videos on previous bikes that I've worked on. Uh, this machine, I don't think I'm going to have to be too concerned about it. It's got a pretty generous lead-in right here. I think you can see on the bottom of the cylinder and that's designed to capture those rings and compress them. I'll probably have to assist a little bit and then I'll just work the cylinder down like that over the piston until it seats. It occurred to me as I was finishing up assembly of the SL125 engine that I really didn't talk about this little piston support that I'd fabricated to support the piston as I was installing the cylinder. It's just a half inch piece of plywood, half inch this way that I cut out these nominal dimensions, not critical any of this, inch and a half wide, about four inches long this way, half inch cut out in the middle, I drilled a half inch hole, and then took it over the bandsaw and just cut this remaining material out. And the way this is used, and allow me to bring in the old crankshaft here because the new one obviously is installed, the way this works is once your gasket is in place, your base gasket, 
slide this over the connecting rod like this. Now imagine, if you will, of course, you'll have the, the engine cases will be below that, something like that. And the idea is, this allows you to support the piston, this is the old piston, as you, uh, obviously you'd have the piston pin already in it, the circ clips will already be installed, the rings will already be installed, and this supports the piston uh, on the cases and keeps it square as you're sliding that cylinder down over the top of the rings. And it makes it a whole lot easier to square up this piston to the case to the cylinder that's being slid over the top. I don't uh, normally throw these little special jigs and fixtures away. You can see there I've labeled it Honda SL125. Uh, piston support with the date September of uh, 2020. And I'll throw this in my box with the rest of my fixtures and jigs that I fabricated over the years. Won't necessarily work on every engine. You might have to fabricate a different one for different engines, but I was uh, remiss in not sharing with that, with that with you earlier, and so I thought I'd just add this, um, pop this back into the video so you can see how well I got the cylinder on okay. I uh, didn't really have any struggle with it. It took probably three or four minutes. So I've got that down, and you know, I can rack it because it's not bolted down right now, but it's ready to go and I just slip this chain, cam chain guide. That's a new NOS part. I just slip that in here for now. However, I have run into a little snafu and that is the cam chain. Here's the original chain and I recall this now that when I took it apart, I had uh, eyeballed the chain a little bit and had a little surface for us so I cleaned it off. And uh, I was a little suspect of the chain then, so I lubricated it with some WD-40 and just set it aside and failed to come back to it. Well, upon a little closer visual inspection here before I installed it, I noticed it's got a kink in it, pretty significant kink. I don't know why, but it does, it, it kind of does this and it's not straight. So I don't trust this chain and that's going to force me to order a new one, which is going to take a few days to, uh, two or three days probably to get here. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to take a chance on this chain uh, failing on me and bending the valves or doing something like that. So, I'm going to have to set this part of the project aside for a few days so I can go ahead and order this chain, and then we'll pick this project, this part of the project up later on once I have the new chain. So I think right now I'm going to move on to a few other things. I've been working on painting the frame so I can uh, finish that up and uh, the various pieces that go with that and the Honda Silver. And I think I'll start disassembling the front forks because I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do for the fork tube. So we're going to stop work on the engine right now and once I get the cam chain, the new cam chain in, We'll pick it up and keep going with the uh, engine reassembly. Well, it's actually now about a week later. Uh, my wife and I took four days and ran up to northern part of the state. We're now in well into the autumn or fall season, and the crowds we thought would be down a little bit. So we want to do a little kayaking. And some of the rivers up there and uh, the northern part of our state's well known for uh, wine making, so we want to do a little wine tasting and sampling and just spend four days kind of kicking around in the nice cool weather. So I haven't really done anything with this in the last week except for I finished assembling the top end. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Top end is complete. Uh, I have installed the new uh, cam chain adjusters as you can see down in here and put this assembly all back together. New cam chain. The uh, cam and the cam gear are original to the uh, engine and I do have the timing, the, the valve timing set now. The engine right now is at top dead center uh, just beginning, it would be getting the intake stroke so both valves now are, are loose. You probably can't tell that from your perspective but they are loose. And I adjusted the gap to 2,000 uh, Imperial 
on uh, both the intake and the exhaust valve. So the valves have been adjusted, everything's been tightened and torqued up. I don't know if you can see right here, let me zoom in for you here quickly. Perhaps you can see the red mark that aligns with that uh, circle that's imprinted into the face of the uh, gear here and that should be at the, when the engine is top dead center, that would be to the top like it is here. And you end up with alignment of this circle, the sprocket holes down to the crankshaft. Set the valve timing. I did uh, temporarily install the rotor on the crankshaft. In fact, you can see the key is still in the keyway right here. So I installed the rotor and then the engine side cover, which has the timing mark right there. And you might notice this has already been painted. Um, we'll come back and discuss all the paint work at, at another time, another video, but I do have all the painting done. So I temporarily mounted the rotor and the side cover to allow me to make sure I got the timing right for the valves. And that was a pretty simple, straightforward job. Uh, at this point, next thing I'll move on to, and that'll probably be the beginning of the next video series, I think, is installing the uh, points. This is the cover. It goes in like that. This is the original to the bike. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. And then uh, the Spark Advance, this is the original. It did come in my box of parts, the Spark Advance unit. This seal right here, this red or orange seal, came out of here. And I do have a new one from Honda. Honda still supports those parts. So once I finish cleaning up this, this cover or this mounting plate, I'll install the new seal. And I have to order, I have ordered a new points backer plate and set of points because those did not come with the bike. So I've got those ordered. Probably be a few days to a week or so before I get those parts and I can install the points. Once I've got the points installed, then I can complete uh, an installation of the rotor and the uh, stator assembly. Again, that'll probably be where I'll pick up uh, the video on the next round. So the top end's done. Yeah, of course there's no compression right now because I have the spark plug out, but it does turn over as one would expect and all the, right there is where the valve wants to open. I'm turning it with the rotor on the right side of the engine and you can, you can um, feel the compression of the valves and being opened and closed as I rotate the engine. So everything seems to be working. I have no interference. No mechanical binding. I did adjust, I don't know if I mentioned, but I did adjust the uh, cam chain, the tension on the cam chain. Of course, that's a new chain, so that will probably stretch out just a little bit uh, early on, and so I'll check that uh, shortly after I get the engine started and settled in. Last thing I wanted to mention is I did install the new uh, neutral switch pickup right here. You can see I'm pointing to towards the bottom. That's a new part from Honda that is uh, still serviced. And that was, there's an O-ring in there and I lubricated the O-ring with a little dielectric grease and just pushed that right into place. And I did test it with my continuity meter and it is working when the transmission's in neutral. Top end of the engine's pretty much buttoned up. So at this point, I think we're gonna call this video and bring it to a close. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, Thanks for watching.